Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belt, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about, well, Gwent and everything that's in this lovely game. Um, today, we're going to be talking about a new deck. I was going to be doing some patch notes as well on the latest patch, but there's not much to say about the patch aside from, you know, um, that. Um, yeah, Renfrey got uh, got quite the nerf there. Um, obviously, um, that was very warranted. Um, she could do a lot of points, and now I think she's about reduced to, I think, on average uh, by a third. Uh, so that is uh, going to be making our lives a little bit more enjoyable. Aside from that, we also got the anniversary event. Uh, so there's a bunch of uh, challenges that we can do. Uh, to get certain avatars, certain card backs, uh, borders, and stuff like that. So, uh, very, very nice. We'll be doing that here uh, along the video as well, because that we still have about 13 days for that. So, that is absolutely fine. But, uh, one thing that the patch also did was add a lot of extra tags to uh, Square Tell units. Um, I actually made a video on this deck already, uh, like last season, uh, so it was already viable then. Uh, but I had some issues with my computer, uh, which meant that I wasn't able to edit that video in time. So we're going to be doing this all over again. So welcome, and we're going to be talking about the Harmonic Dance deck. So the Harmonic Dance deck kind of combines two uh, pillars of Square Cell. We're going to be combining movement with harmony. Um, that is uh, mainly based on a few of the new cards that were added in the uh, latest expansion. And uh, we're going to be going through all of these cards one by one. It's a pretty neat deck, a pretty condensed deck as well, if I can say so myself. Um, and because of some of the provision buffs that we got for a lot of cards in this deck, I actually had to shuffle around a few cards. And basically, I think I added Dunka in favor of removing one of them making up bombs. Um, just to give us a, a little bit more leeway, because a lot of the provisions just dropped from the cards that I was using here. Um, so... As always, I'm going to be going through each and every card one by one. If you're not interested in that, you can use the timeline down below to skip to the example matches. And you can also find this deck, uh, the link to it at least, to the Playground website in the description of this video. So uh, don't forget to go there, upvote the deck list, and uh, yeah, just let me know what you think in general. So, to anybody still here, let's dive into the cards. First up, Dwarf Berserker, but I think I need to explain one of the top level cards for once uh, first. So, we have Saskia Commander in this deck. So, Saskia Commander is a dragon and a soldier, four provisions for 13, uh, no, four power for 13 provisions, has immunity, and on deploy, if you have at least 10 different primary categories in your starting deck, you summon a random bronze Squiretel unit with a primary category that is not on your side of the battlefield from your deck to this row. So you always spawn something of a primary category that you do not have on the board yet. And every three turns, you refresh this ability and just repeat the deployability automatically. Which means that we need to have a lot of different categories, which also functions really well with the Harmony tag. Um, so... That means that we start with a Dwarf. So the Dwarf Berserker, 4 power for 4 provisions, starts with 3 armor, and as long as he has armor, he will damage himself by 1, so taking away one of the armor points, and then damage a random enemy unit by 1 as well. So 7 points, basically with a little bit of removal. Next up, we have a Dryad, so the Dryad Matron. Again, a different primary category. 4 power for 4 provisions, and this is part of the movement package that I was talking about before. So every allied turn, at the end of the turn, you move to the rightmost spot in this row and then boost an allied unit to the left by one. So a uh, basic movement engine that will function really well with some of the other cards. But then we have making a bomb. Making a bomb is in this deck because we have Milva in this deck as well. So you move an enemy unit to the other row and give it bleeding for four turns. But if it's the only unit on that row where it ends, you damage it by four instead. Milva, since we're talking about movement as well, I should show you her as well. Milva Sharpshooter is a very fancy card with 2 power and 10 provisions and on order you damage an enemy unit by 1. If you manage to kill something with that 1 damage, you shuffle this card back into your deck. But mainly her passive is the most important one. Uh, whenever you move an enemy unit, you summon this card from your deck to the opposite row and then damage that unit by 1. So the unit that you just moved with making a bomb 
will be damaged by four damage first and then one extra damage take from milva and if you can then kill it with the order ability from milva then you will uh, move milva back and you will be able to move another unit and get the same damage boost then the second part of our movement options here are movement packages the cat witcher uh two of those in the deck five provisions for four power and at the end of every turn you move self to the other row and damage a random enemy unit on the opposite row by one if you're at adrenaline three so if you have three cards or less in your hand you damage that unit by two instead every turn which is very very nice just hopping back and forth then we have a small harmony based uh, poison package in this deck as well so two dryad rangers four power for five provisions has harmony so will be boosted every time you play a unit with a unique primary category on your board um, and they changed the ability in the latest patch from um, doing two damage and poison just combined to giving you the choice if you put her on the melee row you damage an enemy unit by two if you put her on the ranged row you poison an enemy unit instead which uh, i think is more flexible uh, otherwise it would have been both but now you uh, get an extra point because this uh, card used to be three power um, but need to choose between the two abilities i think it's a fair change then the final part of the uh, bronze movement package is the Dolblathana sentry four power for one and one armor for five provisions um, also gained an extra category, so the soldier category was added to the elf category. And if you put this card on the ranged row, whenever an allied unit moves, you boost it by one, which is our primary usage for it. But if he's on the melee row instead, for example, if it was moved by your opponent, you uh, damage every enemy unit that you move by one. Um, so has a use on both rows. Then Anterion, one of the new cards. It's a beast that is also cursed. Five power for five provisions, has harmony, and can infuse an allied unit with harmony as well. So infusing is new. Uh, I did explain that in my Skellige video as well, but I'll just repeat it here. So infusion is a status effect. So you can purify it away. If you purify the infusion, you also remove the ability from that unit that you purified. So if you um if the unit that you give harmony to is purified then that harmony tag will also be removed so uh but easy way to give you two units with harmony then percival schuttenbach is a gnome for four power and two armor for six provisions and is the only card in the game that has harmony too so boosting you by two every time you trigger his harmony then uh, we have another elf that also gained the bandit tag, Kiaren Ep Esnillen, 5 power for 6 provisions, and on deploy you lock the unit and move it to the other row. That movement will also trigger Milva, so keep that in mind that you still have something to destroy afterwards. Then our purify option is Ida, so Ida is an elven mage for 6 power for 6 provisions, and you get the option either you purify a unit by putting it on the melee row, or you uh, give an allied unit vitality for 3 turns if you put it on the ranged row. So either 9 points and that's it, or 6 points and a purify. Then we have Dunka, I added this instead of the making a bomb since we got those 3 extra provisions. Uh, 4 power and 1 armor for 7 provisions, has uh, Veil and Zeal on her order ability, which is uh, damage an enemy unit by 3 if you're on the melee row. But as long as you don't use that order ability, she also has a passive where she boosts a random Squirtel unit in your hand by 1. So an engine card that gives you a little bit of removal if you want to use it. Then we have the Weeping Willow. The Weeping Willow actually got a very fancy new ability. So originally he had a split deploy ability, either you gain the shield on the melee row or you gave poison to an enemy unit on the ranged row. The ranged row ability remains, but the melee row ability changed to an order ability. So you need to move this card from the ranged row to the melee row. And then if you trigger the order ability, you boost self by the number of unique primary categories among units you control, which is huge. This can be in this deck, can be up to uh, nine, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that could be quite hefty. It even could be 10, depending on what you get from the scenario card. But Weeping Willow is now a powerhouse and is, of course, also used to round out our poison package. Then we have Brehan. Brehan is another one of our tall removal cards, so 4 power for 8 provisions and on deploy you destroy the rightmost unit on an enemy row with at least 5 units. At Adrenaline 3, you only need 3 units on that row to be able to destroy the rightmost unit. You can decide what the rightmost unit is since you can move a unit with your leader ability. So moving a unit to the other row will automatically put that unit to the rightmost position on that row. 
So uh, setup for Brehan is limited. Then we have Barnab Barnabas Beckenbauer, who got a huge provision uh, buff. So he went from 10 to 8 provisions, still has 5 power, and will deploy you boost an allied elf, dwarf, and dryad unit by 3. So possibly 14 points for 8. Also has a pretty unique uh, primary category, the gnome category. So extremely good card in a harmony deck, which is which this basically is. Then we have Triss Butterflies for consistency. So four power for nine provisions and then on deploy. If you put it on the ranged row, you shuffle a card from your hand into your deck and then draw a unit of your choice and boost it by three. If you have Milva in your hand by accident, you can use uh, Triss to put Milva back into your deck as well. Then we talked about Milva, so I don't need to repeat myself here. Gezros is our big finishing card as well. So Gazgaz of Leda, Witcher, five power for 12 provisions, and he moves back and forth like the Cat Witcher. But instead of the Cat Witcher, when you move him to the melee row, he will damage uh, an enemy unit by one. So that's basically the same. Uh, but if you go to the range row, he boosts a unit on that row from your own row uh, by one um, instead. But if you're at Adrenaline three, so three cards or less in your hand, you, uh, in well, affect all units on the row that you're affecting. So if you go to the melee row, you damage all units on your opponent's melee row by one. If you go to the ranged row, you boost all your ranged row units by one instead. So very powerful engine card. Saskia we also talked about. And then the final card is the new scenario card, Mysteries of Lock Fane. Um, at the start, so this card progresses whenever you play a harmony unit. At the start, you get the Lake Guardian Dawn aspect, which will boost itself by the um, number of... Well, it, set, it sets its power to the number of Squartel units with unique primary categories. So in this case, this will be 9. So this is a scenario card that um, gives you 9 points on deploy, which is really good. Then chapter 1 gives you a passive effect that remains even if you progress to chapter 2. So whenever you play a Squartel unit, boosted by 1 for every category it has, which has been boosted significantly because of the fact that so many Squartel cards got extra categories. Um, so very, very cool passive ability now, um, which it already was pretty good. Um, and then the final chapter gives you a special card, a nature card, where you create a bronze Squartel unit with a primary category that you don't control. So you get a unit um, and you trigger all your harmony guaranteed. So uh, this card can play up to 30 points at um, the least if it is used in a long round. Uh, so definitely not to be underestimated. Then for more consistency, we also use the Cursed Scroll. This deck heavily uh, depends on that you get your scenario card, get Saskia. So Cursed Scroll is uh, incredibly good. And it also just gives you your full mulligans with, um, because you can get rid of Milva even if you pull her at your latest draw. And then our leader ability is of course Guerrilla Tactics. So you move a unit to the other row. You can do that three times. If it's an enemy, you damage it by two. And of course, that gets damaged again by Milva. So you can take out four power engines with ease. Uh, but if you move a, uh, an allied unit, you boost it by two instead. So uh, very, very cool uh, leader ability. And uh, this rounds out the harmonic dance deck. So uh, let's not wait any longer and dive into a few example matches. Okay, first match of the day is... Ooh, Skellige. Is that a Sahil deck? That might be a Sahil deck. Um, we do start, which is good, because in those cases I actually keep Milva in hand. Because I'm going to swap her out for Saskia if we don't get Saskia. Barnabas is good for now. Gesras, I don't need. We get Saskia, so I'm gonna get Triss with Milva, I think. Don't need Anterion per se. Do we need a Purify against this? Probably not. I, uh, maybe. I'm gonna get rid of the Berserker here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's start off with uh, Saskia. And then I'm going to swap out, um, pick a card to draw. I'm going to swap out Triss for Milva. There we go. The Drummond Berserker. Very low stakes play to start. And that actually hits Saskia. I'm going to put down Dunka just for carryover. It also means I'm not going to get Triad Matrons. And then we get Raiders, which is not triggered just yet. I could be oppressive and use Milva for this. I'll start with Triss Butterflies. And I'm gonna grab... Uh, I'm gonna put away... I think the Ida. And then we're gonna grab... Um, 
a Dryad Matron, because we know we're not going to get one of those soon. Um, and I am going to get rid of the Radius here since I can. Uh, that's just uh, basically six points on a single mutability charge. Because we also deny the um, value for the damage dealer. I seem to be getting connection loss. Okay, never mind. There we go. Two damage over there, so that gives them bloodthirst. Um, I'm going to put down the sentry now. Because uh, that's going to give us extra points. And I'm guaranteed to get Antarion then if none of the other units actually die. I think the Cat Witcher might be bloody um, Gutting Slashed. Because they must have Gutting Slash here. There we go. Gutting Slash. Called it. I'm going to put down the Triad Matron now. Yeah, that seems like a good option. Triad Matron. I'm also not picking something that the Saskia couldn't draw. Although I don't think I can brick that now. The Ankara Great Swords. I could actually kill that if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I am going to put down the Cat Witcher now, though. There we go. And there's Ontarion, as expected. And I can just pass now if they keep pushing this. Oh boy, you should have passed. You should have passed. That was not a good idea. Because I'm just going to pass now and this is just going to keep going. So why did we, yeah, we end on even, so that's good. Um, I think I'm even gonna push. I have the scenario card, so I'd need one more harmony unit. Um, and we get Gezros. And then we get the harmony unit. And double poison in the same vein. That is really good, okay. Um, I don't need to change anything here. That's absolutely fine. I mean, there is... Yeah, I still have some tall removal cards, but I don't really need any of that. So let's just finish redrawing here. And I'm gonna just push. I'm gonna push. There we go. I'm gonna push. I made the decision. The Ankarit Longship. I could move that, but then I have... Uh, Milva is gonna be out in the open for that. I'm just gonna let the uh, the armor hit here. I'm gonna get an extra point from the leader, uh, the, leader the scenario card anyway. So that is fine. And then we get the Brockfar Hunter, which we can take out in one go. Yeah, so we can take that out. That's an engine card that we can just remove. Like this. Four power units we can just remove. I am going to put down the Dryad Ranger. That is going to trigger the ability. And I'm hoping I'm not getting an elf. Um, or I should first use the elf, maybe. I only have one more movement left. So I'm just gonna lock, yeah, lock the um, the longship. We're gonna get two more points on that as well. So those are uh, big points. Veteran, apparently. And then we get Arnulf. Can I do anything about that? I don't think I can. Oh, we got a connection loss there again. Has happened a few times in this match, so it might not be anything. I'm going to start poisoning um, Arnjolf, because that's just a big, chunky unit. Uh, and then I can play, hopefully, a dwarf. I'm hoping for a dwarf here. Yeah, okay, we get a dwarf. Oh, it's it's probably better to use it like this. Um, so like this, and then we hit the Tuesar Invader. I could have also hit the longship in the back. Um, I guess we'll see. We can still do that with the... Um, the order ability if it doesn't die. That's gonna hit Nova. There we go. Okay. That's fine. Um, move Gazios in the front. It's gonna trigger a bunch of harmonies as well. Um, and then I'm gonna hit the Uncreed Longship. This should be good. There we go. More points. A bit greedy, but more points. Cutting Slash on Yes, girls, that was to be expected. I'm gonna put the Ranger down first. So I can get rid of the Arnulf there. I think we got this. I would be surprised if there's anything coming up. They could kill... Um, I'm almost waiting for it um, to kill Percival. But they don't. Okay. Then I'm just gonna use Barnabas here. 
And he's going to be playing for the full 14. There we go. We get another boost there. And then we can just move something. That was underwhelming. But um, shows you the power of uh, when you're able to actually push. So that's another 15 points gone. But doesn't really matter. There we go. First match down. Okay. Next up we have Knights. Northern Realms Knights. That matchup really sucks um they're super greedy and i don't have enough stuff to counter them so this might not end well but we'll see how far we get um we do not have saskia to start with uh, but we do have ways to getting her we'll get rid of gazras first the double berserk is also not useful and maybe the dryad matron okay 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 it's fine um let's start with dunka and then we can swap out the, um, so we can pick Saskia and we can swap her out for Milva and Milva will be shuffled. I think it's to the bottom of the deck that the stratagem works. I can't check that again, but it is the case. Oof, boy. So the next time you play a unit boosted by distort amount and destroy itself. Okay. Fair enough. Saskia it is. And we do sadly get a, a ranger here. We get the harmony, but we of course lose the poison. Um, it happens. Uh, ideally, you would have the rangers in hand, uh, but that's not gonna be happening over here. Um, so we can get the shield back there. Um, I'm gonna put down the berserker first, because that's gonna hit the shield. Um, they're gonna get it back, but then I can just find another way of hitting the shield again. Um, it's gonna be fine. It's also super greedy. That's a very big unit. Um, I'm also gonna kill that thing, um, because that has more power than you might expect. It gives them two extra points and a passive, which is not something I really want to see happening here. Uh, I'm also gonna put the Cat Witcher down so that gets rid of the shield once again. And there we go, we got the sentry, so the extra boost from the movement package there. And then Raynard already. That is a big investment. Even 212 points already. Um, I don't have Bran, I don't have poisons here, so I'm just going to let the greed run its course. Um, I could do... Is there a unit I really want to have here? I could force with Gazgals, but that's a bit too early, I think. I could use Triss, or I could use Anterion. If I pick Anterion, I might not actually have... No, I can't play Anterion, because Anterion will be the next spawn from uh, uh, Saskia. I can actually push with Barnabas now. I'm going to draw a card. I'm going to get rid of the Anterion, and I'm going to draw um, an Anterion. <laughs> it's fine, I get three extra points. And it actually... Oh, he still has the order ability. How does Grace actually work? The first time this unit's power is equal or higher. Okay, fine. Got it. I could have gotten Brehan as well. Um, there we go. Vandergrift. I could purify that away, but then they, they're forced to boost that even further. Um, and it is 12 to hit the... Barnabas seems early to me, but... It is probably the better option here. Barnabas on these three. So that should get us the round. It's also going to get rid of the shield again. And then we get a pass. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. I'm not really certain what the best strategy is against Grace decks. Because um, I would think I should push here. Even though they have the resilient unit. Um, or mainly because they have the resilient unit. Uh, I need to get rid of the matrons here. I do risk grabbing Milva. If I grab Milva, Milva I'm gonna have to pass anyway. Um, but we don't, okay. Not the greatest hand. Not the greatest hand. Um, I'm gonna hold off. I don't have double poison. I don't have any other tall removal cards, so I can't really do anything here. I don't lose out as well uh, by doing this. Uh, the only thing that they really want to do is probably boost Vandergrift up to 12 so they, he can get resilience again. Oh, we didn't. Okay. Fine by me. So I do need to get... First of all, I love another poison. There we go. 
Okay. So, getting rid of the Matron again. We get a Cat Witcher. Nope, the best card. I'm gonna get rid of the Berserker here. Brrr, fuck. Okay, but we do get a forfeit there. <laughs> Our hand was atrocious, but fair enough. Another forfeit is not good enough to show this soul fright. Ooh, Elven Dead Eyes. I've seen that deck before, I think. That's gonna be the Elven Bandit deck, isn't it? Isn't it? I think it is. Um, we do start, so I can keep Milva. Um, Antarian can go. Boy. Uh, making a bomb can go. And a double berserker can go. Damn, that's a hefty hand. So Saskia is going to be first. We don't have the rangers in hand, so I might risk getting a ranger again here. But we don't. And then I'm going to grab... I think I'm just going to grab a cat witcher here. Um, need to get rid of Milva regardless, so I'm going to pick... Yeah, boosted Percival. I don't have a boost at first of all, goddammit, because I'm not using Triss, I'm using the stratagem. It's fine. Fame death. Alright. Um, since not, there's not going to be a lot of options for using Milva here, I'm going to use uh, it on the Vernossial's Commando at the very least. Um, and then I'm going to put down a Dunka, I think. Yes. Dunka first, then Triss. Just to not block the um, the flow here too much. Vanadane. Vanadane. I can kill Vanadane if I want to, and I'm gonna have to because I wanna avoid those extra points. So Triss uh, goes down here. I really don't have any use for the Berserker or even Antarium here. So I'm gonna put Antarium back in, and I am gonna grab. Yeah, Cat Witcher. Boosted Cat Witcher. Um, and then I'm gonna kill Vanadane with the leader ability again. I don't wanna have them give them uh, round one here. There we go. Okay, that gets them the waylay on Danka, but Danka already used her leader ability, so that wasn't really that useful. Uh, Dryad Matron here. Giving her harmony, and then the cat witcher right on top of that. So they're pretty high, um, so they don't get easily destroyed by waylays and such. There we go, waylay. Um, there's gonna be another waylay incoming, but I'll just put the sentry down. There we go, there we go, there we go. So, the Matron is again out of waylay range. And I don't really have a good... Yeah, okay. I was just about to say, I don't really have a good card here to play. Um, because the Berserk is the one that was left to come out. Um, but that was... That, that went really okay. Um, the question is, do I keep the Berserker in the push round? I probably should. Bren... Is Brahen useful? Yeah, okay, we get another forfeit. <laughs> yeah, so that happens a lot um, because you're pushing so aggressively. You get a lot of forfeits. I think this is the third forfeit in my uh, recording session. So, last match, again, Elven Dead Eyes. So we're going to be employing the same tactic. We also start again so we can get rid of Milva in our hand. And put it at the bottom so we definitely don't pull her although this does not seem to be the case here um brahan can go triss is good for consistency's sake we can get saskia with her because uh, we need to draw a unit with triss and then get the scenario with uh, the stratagem don't need to purify i can definitely use a poison and i can get rid of the second cat which and we get saskia regardless good Good. Very good. So uh, let's just put that down first. I don't, and we do sadly get a ranger, but it's fine. It happens, it's still five points if it's the first card. Because the harmony is triggered up front. Okay. Dwarves. I'm gonna use Triss to actually get Dunka out. Um, so let's put Triss on the ranged row. 
Uh, put. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of Antarian and I'm gonna grab Dunka instead. That didn't trigger Harmony because, of course, Triss is a neutral card. And we get the Dryad Matron there. It does get armored up. So I can't move it with um, Nilva for now. Uh, so Dunka is next, as I just mentioned. Um, I'm gonna still hold on, off on uh, checking this out any further. So that's movement. I can put a Cat Witcher on top of that. And I can swap out my Sentry for something else then. Uh, maybe even just a Dryad Matron. Or no, no, no. I needed the, the Scenario card. I want to be sure that I have the Scenario card here. Dwarven Berserker, that's also just one point of return. Uh, so I am going to put the Cat Witcher down, although it's not going to do too much at the moment. Yeah, Cat Witcher down, because uh, it's still going to get boosted. Um, I'm going to get rid of the Weeping Willow. I don't have a second poison, so I'm just going to get rid of the Weeping Willow for now. There we go. And then we get the Dolmlot on a Archer. If that gets hit by the Berserker, I'm calling bullshit on this rep. This random thing. At least it triggers harmony again like this. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. But that was whole shit. I mean, I still gonna I'm still gonna get round one here regardless. Um our opponent is just burning through their bronzes, which is fair, I guess. Um, we're, we're just tapping away all that armor. So we're going to start hitting something at, eventually that is useful. We're going to be putting down the Berserker next, so that means that Saskia is going to put down an Anterion, um, which is not bad. And then if we need to play Barnabas, we're going to uh, waylay even. Okay. Yeah, this is an Elven Deadeye deck. I keep forgetting about that for some reason. I mean, it's going to get boosted again, so it's not going to be in Waylay range. Interesting. But Dwarf Berserker also triggers Harmony. Um, and we still get hand boosting, so that is absolutely fine. And there we get Ontarion. And again, we hit something with armor. We got really lucky there. I generate... At least two, possibly three points per turn. If they keep pushing this any further and kill one of my bronzes, then Saskia will just pull something else out of the deck. And they're gonna keep pushing. Okay. Ooh. The Great Oak. They're gonna go for the Witcher, so that was overkill, I think, yeah. That was overkill. Um, that is fine. Because that means that Saskia is now prepped to get another Witcher out. Um, so then we're going to get Barnabas. Uh, I'm going to boost Dwarf Berserker, Doblatana Sentry and Danka. Because, yeah, the range is going to get boosted again. So that's 13 points. Uh, we get some more points over there. If they don't play 14 points now... 13 points. Because um, they have engines of their own. I'm gonna pass. Okay. Yeah, they realized it, I think. Um, so now we're just gonna push again. Um, we did get a lot of carryover with uh, Dunka there. A lot of points that we got extra. We do have the scenario cards. Um, so if I can get one more harmony card, which we don't yet. Um, Get rid of making a bomb. Get a cat witcher in return. The Dwarf Berserker can go and we get... Okay, don't get another Harmony card, sadly. Uh, there were three more options in the deck, but fine. Um, I'm going to play the scenario card now, uh, so I'm just going to hard push this. And we get Fain Death. Again, same tactic. I'm going to get rid of that um, that engine card to reduce their footprint as much as possible and then we're gonna get um, first of all if I put him in the back he's gonna get boosted to 8 and then higher it's fine it's fine it's fine 
is always going to be higher than the... Uh, so Igni-wise, that's not going to be a problem. Erden-wise is a problem. Obviously. Oneromancy. Vanadain. Vanadain, I am perfectly happy to just nuke from orbit. I can't really, though. So normally I would be putting down Gazgas, but Gazgas is not going to be too useful here now. Uh, so first it's going to be Kiaden, and I'm going to lock Vanadain. That's going to pull out Milva. I know, but it is what it is. If they try to kill Milva with that, it's also fine. Uh, they're going to waylay Milva anyway. Um, so I'm, I'm good. I'm good. There we go. Mil Milva waylay. I'm almost tempted to play the Cat Witcher first. No, Gazgaz always needs to go first. I'll put him in the front so he boosts the cards in the back. He's also at 8, so that's really hard to remove. And then the Cat Witcher and then the, um, the Dryad Matron, which will basically do nothing aside from triggering uh, Harmony again. So Cat Witcher... I'm actually going to move um, Gazgas to the front, so he triggers the ones in the back again. And he's also boosted a bit, so he's not so easily removed. That is 6 damage, so that's going to hit the Cat Witcher. Okay, so that's a lot of things. Oh boy, why? Okay, am I going to keep pushing? I think I should... I'll leave the final leading ability charge um, for later. This is going to give me two more points on Percival and the cat, which is still alive, so that's also fine. But we're going to get the waylay train after this, I think, so... A risky business. It's still a bunch of points that they need to surpass, so they're definitely going to have to kill the cat, which if they can because it's going to give me another two points so that's 16 points in total that they need to surpass so that is that so six points it's gonna be really close but if they have ooh, if it's Alyssa, then that is only six points oh no it's even okay all right fine. I think that was a good bleed, even though we didn't get to play our scenario card in full. Um, that was... yeah, there were 10 points ahead at the very end there. Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. That is very bad. Um, Anterion... yeah, Ida has more points than Dwarven Berserker, and then we got making a bomb. Why do we get making a bomb? Okay, okay. Well, that's, that actually works out really well. Um, there we go. But yeah, Antarian is not going to do anything. Um, and I don't have anything to give Vitality to. So this is um, a very way... So I'm only going to get 14 points now. If our opponent gets more? But they don't. <laughs> uh, I'm even just going to kill that thing. Um... I'm just going to kill that thing. I want to get as low amount of um, elves on the board as possible. Yep, it's over. Okay, that was hilarious. Um, there we go. I could give I could give her harmony, but that's about it. <laughs> Ooh, that was that was that was all down to card draws in the final round. But I thinned enough, so that was basically why uh, the deck works really well. So there we go, this deck is all about pushing hard. You want to be trying to go for a 2-0 or at least bleed your opponent as much as possible to get rid of their uh, fancy cards and just go for a short final round where it all depends on draws. If you're against monsters, of course, I would avoid that. Even against Northern Realms, you want to avoid like a very short uh, final round because they have uh, a lot of burst potential. Uh, but in case you face off against like very big opponents, we haven't seen any... Um, too much in these example matches but Brehan can really help you out there of course along with the poison package. Um, other than that I think the tactic was pretty clear always start with Saskia Commander and keep your scenario card for the second round and take out engine cards with Milva where you can. 
as always, you can find this deck in the, the, well, the description down below. There's a link to the Playground website. You can import it into your own game and uh, try it out there. Don't forget to upvote it there as well, because all um, feedback is really appreciated. All help is really appreciated. Um, and if you have any, sub well, any tips, any feedback on how to improve this deck even further, do let me know in the comment section down below, because that's what we're here for after all, trying to help each other out. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye, and stay nutty.